Hi guys and thanks for joining in on another episode of Design and a Half. You know it's Friday and you know what that means. You know it's time for Product Hunt Fridays. Okay, let's jump into it and see what we got over on Product Hunt and see what we can dissect on those products that we've uh, we've we're looking at okay so today we have first up volt a prototyping starter kit learn interaction design in framer th with this ui kit Ooh, this is tasty i want to see this okay uh huh volt is made up of 11 prototypes and 30 unique interactions and comes complete with an 11 part tutorial series master interaction design with this all in one resource hmm i think i like this just because uh, actually this depends on whether this thing is made by the guys over at framer and it depends what it's giving you but the very first glance i'm seeing it's pretty cool uh, I see a lot of m movement and especially a lot of pre-made things. Hmm. Let's 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 jump into it and open up the 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 website. Huh. Volt free starter kit. Okay. Start the video tutorial. Okay. Welcome to Framer. Don't have an account. Continue with Google. Sign in. Okay, but why am I being shown a uh, Framer login if I just clicked on start the video tutorial? This is confusing. Whatever, let's see. The product video is nice. It's definitely energizing. Customizable prototypes. Okay, but the question I have is why would I want to customize a prototype? Generally speaking, whenever you want to do something, you, you want to build a prototype, it's specific to the job that it's being done. So the question I have is why do I want to customize a prototype done for a generic job? How does that help me? What I would have rather seen the in, in this situation being super useful is to have a set of components uh maybe some examples of how these components can be used for a for a real world prototype and perhaps some snippets of code or some templates that could help me bring those things to life that would have been much more helpful than having something which judging by the looks of it is is very very generic and and gives me a lot of screens that really don't give me any help at all in terms of i don't know utility i, I mean if, if i'm doing prototyping it's clear i want to prototype for something extremely specific nobody is prototyping just for the friggin' sake of prototyping like i i don't go waking up in the morning and say oh man you know what i want to do today i want to create a friggin' prototype I don't care about what. I just want to build a friggin' prototype. Nobody does that, guys. When you wake up in the morning, you go to work, you see our tasks, and you see, oh, we might need to test this stuff, so I might need to build a prototype for this specific task, but it's nothing generic. It's very specific. Whatever, moving on. Let's, let's see what else they got. Hmm. 11 prototypes okay that's something we got figured out it's not really useful 30 interactions 11 tutorials zero lines of code hmm sign up flow use a customizable no code transition and timeout to navigate to a sign up screen with real working inputs okay uh, preview prototype hmm let's see what this thing does what i'm guessing is that in fact, what this thing is, is some sort of uh, template to help you build, um, I don't know, um, flows, I, I guess, but mm, okay, then what, or, or, or how does this thing help me, I mean, it, to be honest, I, I'm pretty confused as to what the value 
of this is. I'm just looking at it that I, I don't necessarily see a great value in this in this particular thing even if you're the lowest uh, starting up designer I if you're someone who is a junior then friggin framer is not for you come on man like for real if, if you're starting up just go, go get pro protopy just go get flinto just go get something which is on your level don't start up with Framer. Framer is, some, is for people who are more advanced, who understand concepts which are advanced. Like, it's not for a junior, so why the heck would you build something which obviously is aimed at people who are really junior? Whatever. That's just me. Okay, I, I'm just judging this based on my personal opinion. But then again, this is also my podcast, so it's fair, I guess. Um, um, that being said, I don't know, seems kind of cool, but I don't, I, I'm not convinced about the value of this thing. Uh, let's see if it's for sale. How much is it? Open Volt and Framer. No, it's still, it's still trying to, to lock me in. Okay. Um, I don't know what to say. I think it's sort of useful. I wouldn't exactly buy it if it was for sale. It's very low value, to be honest. Uh, it's it's probably more valuable for someone who is really starting out to to do like like uh, prototyping, I guess. But again, for for those types of people, starting up with stuff like Flinto and Protopy or or stuff which is more similar to their to their uh, visual design thing. Is, is more appropriate. Framer is something for people who are probably more familiar with with um, with with more complicated design tools. However, now that I think about it, um, like Framer also launched the Framer X designer thing, like the, the Framer X designer application. So I'm guessing that this is intended for that. I'm guessing, I don't know. But I, I'm not sure what happened to the normal framer because at some point they still had this application that you could do prototypes in, which also allowed you for, for code to be put in and, and create stuff with code. So I'm, I'm a little bit confused as to what happened with that part. Did it just get thrown out? Because that was really cool. Um, did they switch over to, to Framer X completely and just left that thing out? If you know, please leave a comment. I would be, I would be happy to be educated, if I'm ignorant in this in this sense. Okay, uh, moving on, because this is getting way too long. Um, Catch R three, a web community and marketplace for AR creators. Ooh, this is interesting. Let's see what this is about. The new three point version of Catch R. Uh, creator studios organize their augmented and mixed reality portfolio online start to collaborate with businesses and other creators and monetize the source code templates and 3d models using marketplace module hmm interesting okay so there's a guy with a flaming beard that's very reassuring uh, but it's cool <laughs> uh, definitely interesting and, and definitely different than what I'm usually seeing the website is nice. It looks nice and clean. Collaborate with AR um, mixed reality collab uh, creators. Hmm. Wikitude before AR kit. Yeah, it seems like something someone who is interested in augmented reality could be could be doing. Uh, the 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 pitch they have here with this guy looking at a spinal cord in uh, in in mixed ar is is really cool like that's that's sort of the 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 concept that i would see being useful in 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 terms of ar or mr uh way more than than actual ar is like uh, f from f from my point of view mixed reality is far superior to augmented reality just because it overlays the the mixed the, the the augmented one over the normal one with the help of some some glasses that still allow, allow for normal normal vision and they don't impair your field of view which is really really important if you if you're working um, and 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 you're looking at something while you're you're overlaying the the mixed reality on top i think it's it's a cool concept and i think it's got definitely more value than just ar in itself to be honest 
although AR in itself is also useful, for example, if you're thinking about medical students or um, other professions like architects um, and, and stuff like that, I, those things are definitely cool because they would gain a lot of benefit from, from augmented reality in the future, like most likely. Um, so it's it's really cool to see to see AR uh, heading into that direction from from my point of view. Okay, so this is a good one, definitely cool. Uh, let's see what's next. Year in chat. See how you spend your time chatting. Hmm. Website year in chat. See how you spend your time chatting. Open WhatsApp tab settings. Select WhatsApp web and scan the QR code. Okay, we don't access some of your chat information, we don't store any of your data. You can learn more about how it works in your privacy in the bottom corner. Cool, cool, cool. Let me just bring out my WhatsApp. Bring out the WhatsApp web. Plus sign. Let's see what this thing does. Okay. So it's a chat bot. It says we're building your ear in chat. Isn't this exciting? Just a se just any second now. Wow, you spent a lot of time chatting. Mm, okay, almost there. Here's some initial info. I have 2009 contacts. 20 individual chats, 8 group chats. <sighs> okay, I think it's still building. Oh, let's see the results. Okay. Your chats over the year so far. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Okay. You were most chat in June. The most popular show on Netflix that month was Queer Eye. Were you talking about it? No, I didn't even know it exists, nor do I care about it. Uh, probably it was due to the fact that I, I was possibly talking a lot with some of the people that I was supposed to be meeting, I have no clue. But in any case, it, it looks like I have a lot of received texts rather than sent ones. The sent ones compared to the received ones are really, really slow or, or low. Sorry, not slow. Um, and, and the received ones are really high. So I, I, I'm, I'm more part of groups that chat a lot rather than me sending stuff. It's interesting, to be honest. Oh, there's more. You have to scroll down. Okay, this is new. I didn't think about it. Uh, daily average, midweek madness, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay, so most of my stuff it happens after, after Monday, up until Saturday. Okay. Who have you been ghosting? Don't feel bad. Halloween is just around the corner. Um. Okay, I don't really care. Yeah, so one of the most active groups is a, a, a group I have with two friends of mine. Who's your bestie? My wife. The top three chats. Yeah, she's in the top one. <laughs> uh, the groups that were lit. Okay. Yeah, definitely that one with the guys. The groups you were most chatty, of course. The one with the guys. Time to pick up the slack. Messages, send messages, received. Who's being ghost? Ah, okay. A picture says a thousand words. The the biggest one, the the most used emoji was the the laughing head, uh, laughing crying emoji. Mm, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm that type of person. I'm really cheery in, in in real life. Not so depressing as I am right now on the podcast. <laughs> Just joking. Uh, okay. Let's look at another one. This was the third one. We have um, auto plays elevator music when online meetings go silent. <laughs> this gotta be good. This has got to be good. Let's see what this is about. Uh, those silent moments on online meetings can get really awkward. Um, automatically plays elevator music when the conversation goes silent for the comfort of everyone. Uh, does it really help though? I don't know. Silence on online meetings sucks. Not anymore. We fixed it. Um, automatically plays elevator music when the conversation goes silent. See how good it is. Oh God. It's really loud. <laughs> I 
<laughs> your colleagues, not friends. Modern problem, old solution. We're not reinventing the elevator, elevator music came today. Okay. Downloads. Download and run the software. Uh, um will run the background profit. But I, I, one thing I really don't get is when you have a lot of things just like Zoom or, or Google Hangouts, why do you need to actually have something installed on your computer rather than being embedded into the... I guess it makes sense to have it on the computer rather on and integrate it with those services. It's, it's the easiest way to do it, I guess. Hmm, probably. Okay. Mm, I don't really see any value, but it's really fun. So I, I, I would guess it's a, it's a yay. <laughs> a yay. I don't know. Um, I, I would, I would love to see something like this. However, done for for podcast uh, for podcasters like people like me who just need some filling, some some fill in music for the for for the podcasts that they do. I think that would be awesome. That would be really really awesome. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, last one. Indie Hackers TV. Discover shared videos from indie hackers. Ooh, this gotta be good. Let's see what this is about. Okay, being a frequent visitor to the Indie Hackers forum, I've noticed an increasing number of videos being posted. Many people are recording and sharing their Indie Hacker journey as videos with some people doing live streams. Probably a very niche thing. Uh, I don't imagine this being very popular outside of Indie Hackers, I guess. I don't know. <sighs> to be honest, I mm, I don't think it's really useful outside of that but it's definitely got some interesting content here so I'm seeing how to create a landing page with front-ender library what is startup internet why I'm building it okay so it's a lot of people talking about their their startup projects and why they like it I guess youtubers okay MVP and origin story payment process this is interesting. It's not necessarily what I was thinking about, but it's not necessarily bad. It's I think it's quite interesting to be honest. The vlog number four updates. Vlog three idea validation, co-working and project updates, the importance of failure. Well, I think it's definitely got some nice uses to be honest. Yeah, it's it's cool. Okay. Hmm. Interesting find. The thing is that everything has a little bit of value if you're looking for value. There's nothing that's really unvaluable out there per se. Um, everything has a little bit of value if you think it's it's going to be useful for you. For example, this thing might not be useful for me per se because I'm not the type of person that goes on um, on Indie Hackers TV. But I guess for some people out there who do it, it's it's something that they find useful. So... I'm super glad that they built it. Um, I don't get why it's so popular, but then again, it's not for everyone, so it's fine. It doesn't have to be for everyone, so it's 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 okay. Uh, the one thing, I, if if there was one of these products that I would be most mm, interested about, is either the Volt or the Catch R3 the the community based around uh, AR creators I think that one has a lot of business possibility in terms of creating uh, creating a revenue stream around it because to to, to be honest the 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 AR uh, business is going to be booming just just around the corner due to the whole COVID situation and people looking to probably be cooked up more in inside their homes. Um, the one thing that is still sort of bad about the whole AR business is the fact that AR devices are still kind of expensive and um, it, it's just like one of those situations with electric cars. They are still expensive. The moment when uh, AR is going to be more mainstream than it is right now, that means that the prices are going to be definitely uh, plummeting. Uh, on on these uh, on these uh, peripherals for visualization and and for uh, AR stuff, at least that's what I think. And 
that's when for example a lot more people are going to develop peripherals for those goggles and things like more joysticks uh, specific types of joysticks and so on for specific types of jobs because if you're thinking about AR it's 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 a cool thing to do especially if you're designing stuff like furniture if you, or if you're if you're building stuff like cars or like physical products it's definitely something which which is amazing and and super useful um, or in medicine, like I said earlier, I, uh, that's definitely something that I would see being used every day uh, to to better understand illnesses and and for example, over overlap um, a person's, for example, um, how can I say this blood vessel map, like overlay just on top of the person that is actually has it and to 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 determine where potential blockages could be and for example have a medic go take that person for specific places where those uh, where those blockages are um and and have them ct ct or or scanned or whatever like th 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 that's the sort of application that ar would have in a real life scenario or or especially in, in engineering civil engineering in buildings and and architecture that's that's the sort of thing that ar would be really really fitted into uh i don't think it's ha it has a good place in in cars in 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 uh, normal cars it does it it could probably have a really good place in self driving cars in the future just because i think that those self driving cars would need to provide some sort of entertainment for the passengers on board and just having this elevator music would not really help a lot with the conversation starter however AR would also be useful for ads for publicity and for for a lot of marketing in the future just because it has the potential of showing products in a in a real life manner and that sort of would attract and speak to a to a much lower um much lower subconscious level to the consumer rather than seeing a video ad uh, posted someplace because seeing a sort of rendition of a physical product in an AR space that they could probably hold in their hands and interact with and see how it works that's the sort of of, of experience that people um, are, are, are expecting when they do unboxing and so on I think one of the possibilities that if the if if AR goes that way and that route and ends up being used for marketing purposes, what could happen is that YouTube or some YouTubers could go out of business just because the whole unpacking experience would no longer be so 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 sort of um, loved by a lot of people just because you can you can actually get. Uh, uh, AR device or, or get a device and hold it in your hands through AR goggles and just play around with it and simulate an experience in AR and see if that's something that would would fit you for example one of the biggest issues that most people have is the fact that the phones they buy are either too big or too small or the battery doesn't last enough think about using AR to simulate a customer experience this could also mean that UX could benefit from this or, or CX customer experience could, could benefit greatly from using AR through their processes of understanding users just because by using AR in those particular areas you could actually be transposing yourself in the mindset of a user and test out the user's behavior live and also see for example like how product behaves if you could mimic the the specifics of that product to to a higher degree like close to 100 percent or at least 99 percent that would mean that you can actually dog food the product without having to without having having actually built it just by using the specs and the stats it has obviously this has some shortcomings due to the fact that it's not super reliable but at the same time it's it, it would it would cut a lot of um, cash or, or it would save you a lot of cash if you're trying to build a physical prototype um, and, and it would mean sort of uh, being able to, to, to prototype products really fast 
and actually faster than you would do in a normal scenario. So I, I, I think this is the main area or these are sort of the discussions that AR should be rather going towards instead of being used just for entertainment. That's probably the lowest possible way it could go. It's it's just the 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 it's sort of just like Facebook. Um and and I think that would just cheapen it in, in, in a lot of ways because AR has great potential. That's clear. Like AR could be amazing and it, it, instead of I don't know just producing stuff like super cool uh, physical products that whenever you use a AR goggle show a really funny text on it that it, for me that sounds like bullshit sorry it's bullshit it's just wasted time it's just wasted energy and it's just freaking decoration it's fluff what what value does it bring to the whole population or us as human beings when you're using design and for example in this situation AR just without bettering our whole society as a whole it just like doesn't doesn't do any good to anyone it's just using the using a, 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 a tech with amazing possibilities for stupid reasons to be honest and that's that fails from my perspective design really terribly <sighs> okay there we go uh, this was uh, this was another episode of um, product hunt fridays uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it at least entertaining because this was not the, the, the normal type of podcast that I'm doing with uh, me sort of low energy or <laughs> at least so silently at least. Um, please please uh, subscribe if you think or deem me worthy of, of subscription and I hope to see you and talk to you next week. Uh, oh, by the way, that being said, next week I'm probably only go going to re be releasing three episodes just because I, I want to take a little bit of a break from, from, from podcasting for two days just because I'm really, really tired. Uh, there was uh, This week was quite long for me and it overlapped with my son going to school um and and ex no not starting school but going to school in in uh, in the morning it was a different sort of schedule and it full barred both my wife and and my schedule quite awfully and i i need uh some some time off just to to recharge those batteries and and be back in a full swing next week okay again uh that being said have an amazing weekend and thanks for sticking with me for so long um I hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you next week. Bye-bye, guys.